I always knew that I was interested in art and design, but I never really knew that I'd want to be an interior designer or a furniture producer for that matter. Um, you know that you inherit certain uh, qualities from your family and you're constantly absorbing from your surroundings. And um, I wanted to do something in my life that was meaningful, that would sort of reflect my personality and it would make work fun. So I started my career rather late in life actually and um, even though I did my diploma in uh, interior design in 2003 and when I moved back to Pakistan I did uh, you know a couple of projects for friends and family and um, I got into teaching for a while and uh, then at you know it happens they say at 40 something changes and I realized that I was at this uh, crossroad in life where either I could um, stay in my comfort zone or I could take the plunge and do something that I love doing. And um, you know, I, that's what I did. And I, yeah, I took the plunge and I became the, you know, the dreaded E word, the entrepreneur. But before you, you know, become an entrepreneur, there's a lot of thinking that you have to do because it's, you know, it, it looks charming that everybody wants to jump into the business sector. But you have to look deep into who you are and how are you going to make a difference. So I decided to look deep into um, myself and see who I was and how I was going to make a difference. Because I was this tiny little dot in the sea of designers and I wanted to make a difference and I wanted to make my mark. How does one do that? Um, I thought deep and hard and I thought that individuality was the key because no two people are the same. So why should my work be the same as others? I mean, um, you know, it should reflect my personality and you know, the life that I've lived, uh, no one else has done that. So um, I wanted to make my work unique. And uh, that is how I embarked into this entrepreneurial journey. Um, so my story has three main characters. Um, every, um, you know, person in your life it, you know, in, in every sort of incident in your life as well has, um, you know, is of importance that it plays a role. And uh, so the three people that influenced me who and defined me and my work were primarily my mother to begin with. She is actually the one who started Design Dimension in the early 90s. She um, went to England, she did this course at the Inchwall School of Design in UK, which is a leading institute you know of um, even now I mean of that time and even now as well and she came back and started Design Dimension where um, interior designers were not that common and being a woman and in the design field was um, even more rare and after that I felt that it was my uh, father who being a philanthropist among many other things um, I learned from him that you know the pleasure of giving was far more better than any other pursuit in life. And then being married to a, a professor, I, I realized that I had this passion of teaching in myself as well. So I wanted to do something which was me, and I had found the perfect formula. I mean, I had created something that I really liked. So I recreated this brand design dimension that had been lying dormant for many years. I you know, got into designing the logo myself, um, I came up with a business philosophy that would resonate with me and that would um, click with me. It's something really simple, you know. It's, um, I feel that you don't really need to change the world, but you do need to make a difference. So um, I pledged to donate 2% of my profit to um, charity organizations. I signed an MOU with Bali Memorial Trust, the Girls' Orphanage particularly, and Shokat Khanna Memorial Hospital. And, um, you know, the third aspect from my life, uh, the teaching bit, which I really wanted to incorporate, was I designed interior design courses uh, for design enthusiasts and color consultants from a multinational organization. So, you know, and also, um, uh, you know, by that time, the design industry had evolved a lot in the last decade or so, and I felt like I had to go back and become a student because the industry was changing constantly. And to be on top of the game, you have to keep um, uh, enhancing yourself and improving yourself and learning never ends, I feel. And uh, so that is why when I uh, went to actually drop my son to university in England, I, I enrolled myself in Inchwald again and I, I you know, became a student for a while and I loved it thoroughly 
I think it's even better at my age when you go back to learning. And um, after that, I, you know, I came back to Pakistan and I launched my company actually um, through this organization called Dachi and they sort of help uh, promote entrepreneurs and safeguard the local heritage. And actually when I stood there setting up my um, stall at, at night, I had no support. I had my friends and family around me and um, during the three-day exhibition as well. And my 11-year-old then daughter was the cutest little salesperson who helped me, you know, throughout. And um, since then, there's no looking back. And the future is now sort of, um, I would say, um, digital. And that is why I'm looking forward to working with Phoenicia so that we can uh, take the design industry to a different scale and uh, move with the times and technology and create a platform where all the designers from this field get together and um, sort of launch their products and access sort of a, a wider range market so that uh, sort of we can all move together. Honestly, the, the biggest challenge would be believing in myself. Um, I actually think that behind every uh, successful woman, there is a tribe of women who have a back. I was very lucky to have three sisters who are independent young entrepreneurs in their own right. I had friends who guided me and counseled me throughout. I had a mother who pushed me to achieve higher goals all the time. Once you believe in yourself, that's the first step to becoming a businesswoman. But um, then I felt the design industry was very male dominated and uh, to be seen or heard as a female leader, you have to have nerves of steel and you have to be really confident to uh, be assertive in this market. I can name a few challenges. Um, uh, you know, work ethics being number one because I feel our labor is very talented but they do not apply themselves 100%. Um, they're very apprehensive to take on new challenges and designs that they're not comfortable with. Um, they will at times even outright refuse an order if they feel that, you know, this is going to be too complicated. Um, I feel that sometimes they put religion in the way as well and um, I've had workers who refuse to draw animal form or, you know, a, a carving or anything like that of uh, animals. Um, they don't take their deadlines very seriously, unfortunately. Um, they would make one piece of furniture and they would not be able to replicate it flawlessly as well. And um, I think um, this, the, the last issue that I can think of quality control is all over. It's not just in our industry. Um, you know, I feel that even the supervisors, you know, need to be better trained because a delegation of work is, uh, is, is very difficult, I feel. Um, you know, finding good staff, finding good team is, is a challenge. And I'm sure that's in many other sectors as well. I think um, the first couple of times when uh, people said that they recognize my brand, that was one of the biggest moments of success for me. But um, other than that, I feel that, you know, being a designer, you have this vision, you have this, you know, whole concept in your mind and it's difficult to explain sometimes to the client. But when that concept or that image or the, you know, the room layout, when that comes to life, it takes shape and form and it's very tangible. That's sort of a series of, uh, uh, you know, successful moments in time for me. All right, so balance is something, is something that has been very important to me, um, be it in relationships or work. Uh, the advantage of being uh, self-employed is that um, you have flexible hours. But the disadvantage that comes with this job is that you're always working. My routine has changed drastically in the last year and a half because of the pandemic, like I'm sure for other people it has too. Um, everything has shifted online. Uh, the design inspiration was always there online, but my clients are now finding me through um, Instagram, Facebook and Pernicia website and uh, sort of I'm getting my orders through bank transfers. My workers have got uh, bank accounts now, so I'm transferring money to them directly as well. Um, and uh, my, I have online Zoom meetings with them. 
The only, uh, the, the, you know, the physical in, in my day that I have to fit it in is that I have to uh, visit the workshops to supervise the work. I have to periodically go to um, for site visits for any interior projects that are ongoing. I do the photo shoot myself as well because every time a product comes out, um, I sort of either go to the workshop and I photograph it there or I find a location where I would um, have a photo shoot for the furniture before it is delivered. And um, I'm, I'm constantly, I think on a daily basis, uh, trying to find innovative ways to engage with the audience uh, on social media. So no matter what marketing strategy you use, at the end of the day, it's always going to be your product that speaks for you and it's the quality of your product that makes your business a success. Now having said that, marketing does play a major role in how the audience perceives you and your business. Uh, first of all, I feel that before you even think of marketing, you have to uh, acknowledge and determine who your target audience is and you have to find your sweet spot. Now I, I learned all this, this marketing, sort of marketing module course that I did at LUMS and uh, it was very beneficial to me. Why? Because initially when I started exhibiting, I was uh, going crazy with trying to uh, make different designs and uh, mixing different styles and it was a very eclectic uh, um, sort of the, you know, the, the products that I had. And then I realized that I have to narrow it down and I have to find the right audience for my uh, work and that they would come to design dimension for a certain thing. What was that certain thing that would bring them to me? And then I sort of came uh, sort of this, to this conclusion that my work was very, um, it was contemporary but classic at the same time. And I had to tap into this very sort of niche clientele that um, you know would know me for my work. So after determining all this, then you uh, go into marketing and I think my uh, biggest marketing move in the past would be exhibiting, um, collaborating with Banos Closet in Oman, having an exhibition there as well, tapping into the international market and uh, now uh, sort of my, I think the, you know, the recent marketing uh, move would be to collaborate with a digital platform like I said with Phoenicia, so that I have a wider reach audience. I have now sort of, I have made a place for myself in the circle, but to expand that circle, I need um, the help of technology and um, sort of a digital platform that would take the business to a different level. I have two goals, and one is personal and one is not so personal. Personally, um, I feel the only way to expand my business now, take it further to a different level, is through e-commerce. And that is where Phoenicia has a major role to play because, um, you know, the, the, the reach that we can have on a digital platform, physical online stores cannot do that. So that is my biggest, um, you know, uh, future plan that I have with Phoenicia at the moment. Um, the other goal which is not so personal is, is to put Pakistan on the map for its design industry like it once was for the garment sector. Um, I have visited a few showrooms uh, when I visit abroad and uh, you know that's my interest and I feel sad that we have all the talent, we have a great skill, we are very good at mother of pearl inlay work, carvings, hand painted stuff that um, the European market, they're very good with the, with the industry in, you know, in sort of technology and, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of uh, the designs and all. But if we can adapt that with our uh, skill set, we would be a force to reckon with. And hopefully Pakistan is going to be out there soon. And I would um, hope for the government to play a role in you know in aiding the manufacturing side um, you know in the sector and uh, one day hopefully design dimension would also have a small role to play in this and i would love to work with uh, uh, women workforce actually and train them and hire them and uh, and and you know and in, include them in this field I'd like to tell them that success is no accident. 
that it takes a lot of hard work, perseverance, you're constantly learning and evolving and you have to love what you do, you have to take risks and uh, most importantly you have to remember that you have to focus on the goals and not the obstacles and like I said earlier as well you have to believe in yourself, the rest just follows.